We've been talking about the kingdom of God for the past few weeks. Worshiping together, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the kingdom of God today. Um, we may be all over the place where we connect with Jesus. Um, we may be right at the beginning coming to know who Jesus is. We may have walked with Jesus for many years. But wherever we are this morning, I think this truth that we're going to look at today speaks to all of us. So let's start off with a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this word from Paul as we look at the, the book of Philippians today. Lord, um, a passage that has become alive in my life. Lord, I would just pray that you would communicate your spirit to us. Lord, I pray that we would not be distracted by the things of the world, the things that life brings with it, but that we would be focused on you. That we would not be distracted. We pray this in your name. Amen. You know, in, in 1985, I graduated from college. I know that makes me old, right? Um, I had really grown in my faith during my college years, and, and I was discipled um, through a campus ministry for, uh, organization on campus known as the Coalition for Christian Outreach. I cannot say enough good things about that organization. It's something that I support. I think they do incredible campus ministry. But uh, upon graduation, I had no idea what I was going to do. I had studied art, and in, if you're not willing to move to New York City or, or California, you stay in Western Pennsylvania, the art career is something that's really hard to break into. So I was doing um, a lot of different things, and I just got a regular job while I figured it all out. And I worked all night at a gas station um, on Interstate 90 and moved back home for a while. It was during this time that my pastor, my home pastor, approached me to do the youth ministry at the church. This was not a paid position, and it was never going to be. I knew nothing about youth ministry, and I knew that it would take up a lot of my time. Being committed to something does take some time, as you know. I prayed on it, and after some time, I jumped in. You know, I was, I was actually very honored to be asked. And I said yes. And you know what? I, I really, really learned a lot. And I spent a lot of time with the youth. They came to, to my parents' house that I was living at at the time for Bible studies. Um, we did fundraising. We did youth Sundays. We, we had activities. It was not all fun. Some of it was a lot of work. And I did not do it alone. There were parents and other adults that we had to recruit and build relationships along the way. It was, it was not easy. Yet, there was adventure and there was learning and relationships that were built along the way. And even though I was young, I was in my early to mid-twenties when I did this, I became a trusted leader in the church that I went to at 32nd and Zook Christ United Methodist. I have to tell you that it was all a blessing. One of the biggest blessings in my life, if not the biggest. Yes, there was work, and there was time given, and there was frustration, and sometimes a feeling of conflict with others, because yes, you do have conflict in the church at times. Times that, we wanted, that I wanted to quit, but there would be some hope that kept me going. But over the period of time, it became such a huge blessing that didn't compare with the work or the time or the frustrations that went with it. And whatever else it brought with it, it was a blessing. You know, I got to go into the homes of, of the, the, the youth that I worked with. Parents built relationships with me as well. I developed a great uh, amount of friendships with both being invited to do some pretty neat things with their families. I was able to see the youth grow in their relationship with God and with Jesus, and there's nothing better than that. And I can tell you, that as the years went by, and I still do get these, 
I would receive letters from the youth. Sometimes I have to remember who is this person because it's been so long now. You know, at one time I was asked to be a best man um, in one of their weddings because he wanted the best man in his wedding to be the, the man who influenced his life the most. What an honor that was for me. Wow. I could, I, I'm not trying to brag this morning because I am humbled by all this, but I could go on and on about the blessings that the ministry has brought to me. It led me to other ministries, such as campus ministry. I went back and worked with Coalition for Christian Outreach at the same school I went to, and ultimately, full-time ministry as a pastor. And you know what? The blessings continue. Now I get paid for it. But, but I will tell you today that the blessings will always outweigh what a person can get paid. It is still sacrifice as it takes my life. And, and at times, I, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed with, with the work. Yet I am overwhelmed a lot of times as I look back as I see the many, many blessings. Because I have been part of, of, of ministry of some kind. Kingdom work. Kingdom living. It's been a blessing. You know, the Apostle Paul talks about this in one of his letters. It is the letters to the church of Philippi. The book is called uh, of Philippians. You may have read it. Um, and, and Paul gives us a formula um, of, of, of or describes what I just talked about. How to get there. The unity that this kind of living, that this kind of ministry, that this kind of kingdom approach can bring. Let's look at it this morning. It is found in one of my very favorite passages in the scripture. Actually, it has become one of my go-to passages, and I probably preached on it when I first came last year, when I preached on my favorite passages. It's Philippians 2, 1 through 11, and it reads like this. Paul says, the Apostle Paul says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and, and, and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one of mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others in your relationship with one another. Have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue can acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. It's an incredible passage to me. And if you look at this scripture, it gives us a formula to talk about, to back up what I just talked about, about the blessing of ministry, uh, about the blessing of living into the kingdom. And it uses a word. Um, a, a word that is found all throughout the, the scripture passage that we're looking at today. Um, if you know anything about the New Testament, you know that the original um, passage that we're looking at today was written in Greek. It was first written in Greek. And there is a Greek word that is found all throughout the passage that we're looking at. And it's important to look at today. And it is a great blessing when this word is lived out. It is the word phroneo. Can you say that with me? Phroneo. Phroneo. Like fro, nay, that a horse can say, and o, oh, like oh my goodness. Phroneo. It essentially means to think. 
But if we look at how it's used in the passage that we're looking at today, it means to be like-minded. Look at verse 2 with me. It says, Then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one of mind. If you look at it with the Greek word, then make my joy complete by being from NATO, by being like-minded, having the same mindset as one another from NATO. Now, I want you to do something this morning. Look at the person that you're sitting next to or the person that you might be sitting around. Would you like to be thinking the same as this person? It probably depends on who you're sitting next to. And I don't want anybody changing seats this morning. <laughs> but you know what? We cannot stop right there. We, we need to look a little bit further. And this mindset is more defined. Look at this. It starts in verse 5. It says, in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. So you're supposed to have the same mindset as, as, as each other, but also be in phrono, phroneo, the same mindset of Jesus Christ. And to look at what Jesus' mindset is, we need to look at verse 6 and 7. And it says, Who, Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. So the mindset of Jesus Christ then is the form of a servant. So did you see how it all unfolds? Did you see this formula? First, we should have the same mindset as one another. We should be thinking the same, and that mindset should be that of Jesus. And Jesus' mindset is that of a servant. So is it clear that we should have a mindset of a servant? Is it clear or clear as mud? This is what I was talking about today, and the result of it for me was overwhelming joy. This kind of living, this kind of kingdom living will bring us joy. You know, I talked with a few others this week too. I, someone on the trustees said that they have built relationships with each other by being involved in this way, by being involved with the trustees, doing the work of, of Christ. They have developed relationships with one another. And, and have experienced blessings that they cannot begin to be thankful for. Someone else said that when they have served with dinners such as our Thanksgiving dinner, that's going to be coming up. They have experienced blessing and community. This is the result of kingdom living. And you know what? It could be a clue to if what we are doing is kingdom work or kingdom less living, that it will bring this time of blessing. Are we being blessed by it? Is it blessing others? Are we finding a deeper connection to God? Are, are, we, are we leading people to know who God is? It should not be why we're doing it for this blessing, but it can be a result of such living. You know, um, a concept that we have a really hard time understanding the church is the Trinity. And I believe that the Trinity shows this intimacy as well. The Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is how we live this kingdom out. This kingdom way of life. This is how we live it out. You know, I say it every Sunday in, in, in our benediction that the Father shows us love, that the Son shows us the sacrifice, and the Spirit shows us the amazing ways that we can live this out, that we can live into it, that we can get the word out. The Spirit helps us live into and shows us how we should respond to the kingdom. You know, we, show, we know that Jesus talked about the kingdom more than any other thing if we read scripture. We also know that it starts off as something small and can grow into something big. We looked at that last week. And we also know that the kingdom is something that should, we should be working through every area of our life. It should show the kingdom. Not just some of it, every area. If we look at the other parables, we see 
that the kingdom of God is something that we should value and something that we can search out. It also exists where there is both good and evil. We see that in the scripture. The kingdom does not wait for evil to be gone. In the end, when life is here, it is promised that the kingdom will be separated from the evil. But until then, the kingdom will exist with the evil which exists in the world. We will also exist alongside the evils of the world, and we will need to be alert to those evil things. You know, the Father has provided the kingdom. The Son shows us what the kingdom is if we look at his life. We can see the kingdom if we look at Jesus' life. And if we let the Holy Spirit help us, we will learn to live into his kingdom. You know, for the last few weeks, we have been having someone give a testimony or a teaching while some art is being done during the series of sermons. The one we're going to use today is actually one that we used together with a seminary student that was attending this church. He did it for an assignment. You know what? He got a hundred on it, which is kind of exciting. Um, so it's a little bit more heavy than the other ones is, so pay attention to it and look at this. The kingdom of God. When speaking of God's kingdom, we see some layers. There's the eternal kingdom, which will come after Jesus' triumphant return. There's the kingdom of God in the community of believers now through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in us. Either way, the kingdom of God is both here and now and in the future. The beauty behind it all ties into one of the more core doctrines as Christians the Trinity. That doctrine which gives us the unique and distinct relationship of our triune, three-in-one God. The Bible teaches that Christians have recognized for over 2,000 years that God is one, but is made up of three distinct persons. How does that work? Well, let us first define the Trinity so we understand who and what we are talking about. The Trinity is the one true God who exists in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Equal in nature, equal in glory, and distinct in relations. God the Father is the creator of all things and the lover of humanity's creation. Jesus was sent to us by the loving Father and is fully human and fully God. The Holy Spirit is for us to know God. He is our helper and our advocate and the one who indwells us. Our God is a triune God, three in one. We know in Genesis 1-1 that the Holy Spirit was with God before everything. We know in John 1, 1 that Jesus is the Word and the Word was with God. He has always been there and is God. We see Jesus talk to his Father. We see it in the Lord's Prayer and in the garden asking God to pass the cup before his crucifixion. We see the Father talk to Jesus as he comes out of the water at his baptism in Mark 1, 8. We see Jesus and God sending the Holy Spirit to live in us as we believe, to help us, to guide us in knowing God. John 15, 26 and John 20, 21 through 22 show this. We know that they speak to each other, have their own wills, have their own roles, get the same purpose of saving humanity and establishing right relationship. We worship a God that is relational. It is within his very nature, through the Trinity, that relationship is established in us. Have you ever wondered what the reason we desire relationship, friendships, love, and the purpose of life is? Well, it's because God created us in His image. That in the image includes the need of a relationship of God. The relationship God has within Himself in the Trinity. It is humanity's building block. It gives us the answer for why we are here, why we are made, why do we long for these things. The kingdom of God is built on that same block of God's relationship. God's kingdom, whether here, now, or in heaven, is built on the basis of relationship and love, mutual submitting, serving the other, dwelling together, and we use these and we see the picture of the Trinity, God's relationship with himself, and God's kingdom clearly. We are integral to God's ultimate kingdom. He wants us in his kingdom, has made a way through a part of himself, Jesus the Messiah, to get us there. All we are required to do is believe in the Son who died and rose again for our sins, and we receive the Spirit who lives in us. God made a way for us to get back into the right relationship in Him and into His kingdom. What we do as Christians, God sees because He is there. The Holy Spirit is in us. Have you received that kingdom? We would love to talk to you about how to receive it. If you have received it, are you living your life according to that kingdom you are a member of? The Father loves us, His image creation. The Son died, rose, and resurrected again for us. 
The Holy Spirit is in us. All this should change how we live our lives in God's kingdom. It should change how we read God's word and how we love our fellow men. Knowing that the Trinity, the three in one, the God of ultimate relationship, is there with us and in us. Now the Trinity shows us a deepness of relationship. It's, it's pretty complex and it takes a, a, a long time to understand that. Many scholars have, have really approached that subject. It's something we talk a lot about in seminary. I am sure that, that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are in the same mindset. They are for Neo, the mind of the servant. The working together of the three brings to true community. Just know this. The working together of the three brings true community. It is like that for us when we work together too. We develop a deepness in community that blesses our song's life. At least it has been for me. If you haven't experienced that, talk to me about that or talk to someone here. You know, we have some easels that are signed up that are outside the sanctuary for areas that we need people to serve. You might want to sign up on one of those easels to start looking at how you can serve into the community if you aren't already. For you know what? The Father loves us. The Son has sacrificed and the Spirit is continuing to do a work and wants to work through us. Let's pray. Lord God, as we think about the blessing of community, we thank you. We thank you for the avenues that we can live this out. Whether it's within the walls of this church or we're outside, or we lift up our brothers and sisters in other churches that are, are serving you. May we be from they oh, together with each other so that we can Experience true community for what we are one, we will experience that one. Lord, we pray as we go our separate ways today that you would continue to show us how to serve your community, how to live into the kingdom.